Hello, Airbus Cockpit Coach here, and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to look at the load sheet. Now, the load sheet function is something that's not available in all aircraft, but it is provided to us within the Phoenix model of the A320 inside Microsoft Flight Simulator. This video follows on nicely from that of last week's, where we looked at the operational flight plan and the various weight and balance information there, and how to get the best of that for your immersion within the uh, the flight simulation world. The load sheet is not something we have to use as part of the, the simulator setup because we know that our aircraft is going to be loaded as to what's in our flight plan generally. So that is the way it works. Uh, I guess there could be some models out there that I'm, I may not be aware of which may simulate differences. But at the moment, generally speaking, the aircraft is going to be loaded to what you've asked it to be loaded through the likes of SimBrief or, or whatever planning tool that you're using. I'm going to talk through the, uh, the load sheet itself and just show you and explain how we'd use that in the real world. So here we have our preliminary load sheet and the time it was produced. So it's always important to check that it's the prelim and the addition number is also listed below. And that's important to be aware of it may be the case that we'll have a number of different additions coming through, uh, especially as passengers get offloaded, don't show up uh, or whatever, and extra added passengers get added last minute. So uh, that, that can change a lot. Um, it's not uncommon to have up to six or so additions before we actually get uh, to a final point. Sometimes a prelim load sheet's not always available in the real world. Uh, it's, it sometimes can be passed to us uh, via paper. Sometimes I'd have to pick up the phone and phone dispatch and get a very basic understanding of our, our information such as uh, our sort of estimated weight and uh, center of gravity for, for the uh, for the flight and we work off that basic information which can then be sent to us once finalized. So it's, we do have various sources of information that it may be given to us in different ways but generally speaking uh, it will be through the MCDU and is, is linked up via ACARS. So one of the first tasks, obviously we, we get into the aircraft, we power up, we'll, we'll link the systems up and our dispatch department will then send the information over to the aircraft once they know we're on board. So we have our flight number and uh, after the forward slash there, we have the date uh, of which the, uh, the flight is going to be undertaken and also the date for which the uh, flight or the pre preliminary flight load sheet was produced so if we were to and you may wonder why we have this the, the date twice it's possible that uh, if the flight was delayed we may pass over uh, midnight utc and therefore there'll be a difference here it, it may be the flight of yesterday but the, we, the load sheet was calculated um, recalculated uh, the following day so there may be a difference in that scenario we then have our, our route, so we're Luton to, to Barcelona here. Um, the next field is actually our registration. A bit of an incorrect one today as we're sitting in an EasyJet aircraft, so it's put an American registration in. That's probably my bad um, how, in terms of how I've set up SimBrief, uh, but you'd normally see your registration in there. But it's very important to cross-check that to the actual aircraft you're in, so do, do cross-check that as Every aircraft has its own variations in terms of, of weights and so forth. Uh, different bits that have been added, such as whether the aircraft has um, brake fans, for example, would add weight to the aircraft. So little variances like that. Um, so every aircraft can be different. It's important that that's, that matches for uh, the calculation purposes. And then the last field on that line is uh, the crew on board. So you have flight deck crew and cabin crew. So so two pilots and four cabin crew. Then we have our zero fuel weight and our maximum zero fuel weight, quite close today. We have our takeoff fuel. So that's an important figure we perhaps need to check as we get to, towards the runway. If we've been sitting around for a long time, we want to make sure we're departing with that amount of fuel. So it's a good one to know. And we have our takeoff weight and our maximum structural takeoff weight. And then we scroll down. We have our trip fuel, so four point, almost 4.5 tons. Then we have our landing weight. So 
see here we've got 63.8 tons and we've got their maximum structural landing weight of 64.5 and this L over here indicates what we're being limited by in terms of loading so we are actually limited by landing weight today uh, this could be this could be takeoff weight it could be zero fuel weight and the next line shows us our underload so only 683 kilograms of uh, potential extra capacity on this aircraft so it's, it's pretty tight and something we'll have to keep an eye on especially if we had passengers added last minute you know an extra few show up okay we want to board that flight we may actually have to turn them away because um, you know, depending on the numbers um, due to that it's very close that so is one we need to keep an eye on and if we were also to consider taking a bit of extra fuel that's also going to have an impact so there was a bit of weather en route uh, potential for more holding at, down at Barcelona we're getting pretty tight there as you can see so uh, pretty full load for this flight in terms of weight not a full load of passengers 158 so the first field here indicates the number of uh, infants on board or children and then 158 adults uh, the weights of the two are calculated differently this should display the total of both of those but it's not for some reason then we've got our zero fuel weight center of gravity here which we'll throw into the mcdu on the and the unit b page uh, shortly and uh it's 28 percent on the trim and the next line shows how many passengers we've got in each section of the aircraft so the uh the passenger area is divided into three areas we've got 56 at the front parts 50 in the middle and 52 at the rear And then we've got information about uh, additional things uh, that may have been added so, and also our water so 100% water on board uh, that's important if there's a variation there we may want to send a, a message to our dispatch um, to take that into consideration for weight purposes and then we have information around who has prepared the uh, the load sheet as well uh, we do often have a contact number in there as well so we can contact this person and request changes as required. So scrolling back up, so we've got a zero fuel weight of 60 point, we can round up 60.3. And our zero fuel weight center of gravity of 30.1. So we throw that into the init B page we could even run a check on that uh, calculator, see what the uh, the system says we should be uh, using for that. So 8.4 tons. We've actually got 8.2 on board, so you know it's, it's we're a little bit tight. We may consider taking a little bit more, and that's where the underload comes in. So it's a very close scenario. This one, it's quite an interesting one in terms of uh, the weight. So it's it's definitely one to keep an eye on to ensure that we arrive at destination below our maximum structural landing weight. So as part of this preliminary check we'd also run these figures through our performance calculator to ensure that there's no issue in terms of uh, the takeoff itself. Otherwise we'll get too far down the line and can't make any changes and we can't you know, get on to dispatch it'll be too late the aircraft's loaded and We've got the whole hassle of having to make changes at that stage is not ideal so we would at this stage be running some takeoff calculations to make sure that that weight scenario that we've been given through the, the prelim load sheets works for us and so we're able to safely depart so once we're happy with that we accept that's essentially us accepting and signing off on the preliminary load sheet and then once loaded uh, we'd expect to see a final load sheet come through which will either confirm that it's compliant with the prelim load sheet previously issued and it will give the addition number that it complies with so it'll be cross-checking or there may be changes and changes will be indicated by a, a double forward slash against the figure that has changed so it, it calls that out within the, uh, the load sheet itself so we've received our final load sheets and it will look something like this. This one is in compliance, as you see at the top, with edition number one. 
So no change is needed. All we need to do is cross check the values that we have in terms of zero fuel weight, passengers and so forth, just to make sure that zero fuel weight and really our zero fuel weight center of gravity is, is the key ones there to cross check. So once we're happy with that, we can accept if there were changes, as I mentioned, uh, to this, uh, the changes were required, you'd see uh, double forward slashes against the figures that have changed, so it calls those out. So that's the load sheet, so that's how we use it, so it's uh, great for getting a bit that sort of starting point of information around flight, assist with the flight planning, making sure that the aircraft is at a, a weight which is going to be suitable for flights and uh, you know operating within the safe margins it's uh, good to get that information early on so if tweaks are adjusted we would communicate back to our dispatch department and they can adjust accordingly look at what changes can be made from from their side in terms of loading or, or distribution of uh, passengers even on the aircraft so cargo etc so all, all those things um, so it's, uh, it, it is useful uh, to, to jump on that information as, as soon as it's available and, and have a look at that. So unfortunately, it's not always fully available before a flight. Uh, it can come you know, a, bit, a bit too late down, down the line to, to be able to make significant change. Um, but obviously, we, we would never depart with an unsafe weight configuration in any case. Okay, so it's important to, to look for this information. Um, sometimes it is available a long time in advance. It depends. That's, uh, we can be given ideas of fuel and so forth and on the way to the airport we were looking for our uh, our pads so it's uh it does vary there's, there's not a great deal of consistency there but generally speaking once we fire the aircraft up uh, we have that information available to us it does add a bit of extra immersion to your your flight simulations that's how we use it uh, get it's important to get that sort of takeoff calculation in terms of performance done quite early on based on these figures so we can identify any changes early and uh, just making sure that we've got a good understanding of what our that, that underload weight is quite key so what what margin of uh, movement have we got within the aircraft in terms of weight that's really important have a play with that uh, any questions on that please drop them in the, the comments and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one take care